<laughs> and a good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. Promises to be exciting as always. I'm Yemi Adebaya. On the show tonight, we'll be talking about football on the domestic scene. We'll talk about the Nigeria National League. We'll also talk about uh, the Nigeria Premier Football League. Uh, and of course, we'll talk about the English Premier League. Uh, big matches to be played over the weekend, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Chelsea fares against Manchester City, how uh, Arsenal fares against Burnley. A lot of interesting matchups uh, that we're going to see in the English Premier League. And of course, we'll talk about the ladies as well on the show that will be up against fierce rivals Cameroon. Talk about the Super Falcons of Nigeria. That's the outlook of the show for today. Sit back, relax as we bring this to you. It's a two man show. My colleague Austin Okonak is suited and ready as we take you on this ride together. Spot the greetings to you, Yemi, and of course, everyone joining us on the show tonight. Still an action packed world of sports. So much happening right here in England. The English Premier League will be back. Uh, tomorrow, Super Saturday, when Chelsea hosts Manchester City. What's going to happen with that one? Because with football, you never say never these days. And impossible is nothing. Also on the show tonight, we show some love to the Nigeria Premier Football League. I kind of missed it here, I mean, because of the AFCON. But now action will resume March the 20 already. Can you believe it? I remember when the season just started, I was there talking about it. And now we're talking about March day 20. That should really get us talking. And the Super Falcons going against Cameroon, you know, uh, that that's a clash in African women's football that people look forward to because of um, the rivalry, number one, and then both sides trying to, you know, make an impression on the continent. So I'm looking forward to that one to see what the Super Falcons can do. But no pressure. Uh, and, uh, and I believe they can get the job done, Yemi. All right, uh, no pressure. Hopefully, uh, the girls will get the job done, make us proud, as uh, we've uh, always uh, been used to. Let's go out uh, the Nigeria National League. At some point, uh, we'll bring our guest in uh, when uh, he gets in. But let's uh, I'll start you off talking about the Nigeria National League, our next port of call on the show as they prepare for the second stanza. And, of course, the uh, news we're getting and the information uh, that has been uh, put out is that the second stanza would resume on March the 1st. And that's what, um, of course, the critical stakeholders have been saying, the information uh, they've uh, put out. Let's allow you to uh, listen to uh, the key stakeholders in the Nigeria National League will come back to discuss in detail uh, expectations for the second stanza of the season and, of course, uh, the impression of uh, the first stanza gone by. To propagate it's better for us as a league board to say okay let's give these clubs enough time because we started the season early or like previous seasons when nigerians didn't even believe that we were going to start when we started but when we shifted by one week they felt oh, it's going to be the usual thing but we started early in nasarawa and we have all the time in the world we are going to play 11 weeks in the second stanza. So by our projection, if we start in March, which means by June, the season would have come to an end. We'll go into the Super 8. And once we go into the Super 8, we'll round up and begin to plan for the 2024 uh, season. So time is on our part. We are aligning our calendar in line with the mandate given to us. We are zero tolerance to anything that they call vile violence. When we observe one, we don't we don't rest. I can cite an instance to you. It was a state television covered match, and we observed that in, in the fans of the home team were throwing pebbles at the bench. That's the cover of sand of the dugout for the away team. In, before they finished the game, they saw our our sanction. We sanctioned them instantly. We sanctioned them. We don't wait because we work, if we allow it, you know, like our common saying. A stitch in time saves nine. If we allow that, then the next time they will touch referee. The next time they will touch awaiting. So this is how we have been going. We believe we will record more in the second round. Though they have their own as clubs because they have a right to have ambition. But our own ambition is a well-organized league where a level playing ground, you have a good team, win it, home or away. That is the grant we are providing in the National League. All right. Talks about uh, level playing ground. Uh, talks about plans to 
ensure that everything is in tip-top shape uh, as we um, wait to around the circumstances of the Nigeria uh, National League. Uh, and of course, if anything is to go by, uh, you could trust uh, some of the stakeholders with what they've said, uh, if um, what they've done in time past uh, is to be taken seriously. Uh, and Austin, you, you listen to the stakeholders there from uh, the people at the top and people who make the decisions and, and some of the things um, they've spoken about are things we've always clamored for. That's right, you know, because it's very important, uh, the NNL second tier football in the country. And I always say that the NNL can actually be um, the foundation for league football development in Nigeria. Uh, we were expecting it to start today. The, today, on the 16th of February, was the earlier proposed date to, to, to kick off. But now it has been moved to March the 1st. And the chairman, George Allo, explained to us why that was done. And according to him, if they if they play from March, it will run up to June, about 11 weeks of football. And then they can still be, you know, right on time for the Super 8. So that's good planning. Uh, whatever is making it, uh, postpone it, I'm sure when it comes back, we'll get the best of football. And Ayo Abdurrahman just spoke about the need to be firm. We always say that, look... There's no point putting laws in place when you know you do nothing about it when people break them, you know. So that him saying and reassuring us that they'll they'll create an enabling environment where fans will be of good behavior and if people misbehave, sanctions will be given immediately, you know, just so people will understand that this is professional football in display. This is not football where you just come and behave anyhow. And I like this and I like the scenario he used. He said, look, by the time you start allowing them, they get into the pitch, next to the one who assaults referees, and then they're going to fight other spectators. These are the sort of shenanigans that keep people away from our league football. So kudos to the NNL. It's not just talks. We will monitor them now when the league commences. Match the first, we hold them responsible. They need to be accountable to these words and know that the media is actually watching. Uh, I mean, this is this is really good. About 40 clubs, yeah, uh, in the NNL. So uh, let's find ways that we can use the NNL to develop the MPFL. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And uh, if we can get it right at that level, we will be able to get mm. it right uh, from the very top. All right, let's move on on the show. We're done with the African Cup of Nations. Now we can focus on the league, and that's the Nigeria Premier Football League, and that's just what we're going to do uh, tonight on the show. We'll be talking about Sporting Lagos in a bit, but let's preview matches to be played uh, over the weekend, uh, match day 20 fixtures, that is. I'm very sure it's going to come up uh, on your screen, uh, match day 20 fixtures. Uh, very interesting fixtures uh, to uh, take a look at. Let me just quickly go across and uh, uh, talk about. Let, let's start from tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow on Saturday, match day 20 fixtures, Heartland, Nazemi Loniers will be up against the Kano Pillars. Uh, that's on Saturday. AMA International, the Abai Elephants will be up against uh, Shooting Stars, 3 uh, the Uli Uli Warriors, as some like to call them. Then on Sunday, where you have a chunk of the matches to be played on match day 20, you have the Sunshine Stars, Akure Gunners, up against Kuala United. Abia Warriors will be up against uh, Redmore Stars. Bielsa United will be up against Gombe United. Enugu Rangers, the Flying Antelopes, will be up against Aqua United, the promise keepers. They've not been keeping promises these days. And uh, then, of course, Casina United up against uh, Niger Tornadoes. These are matches to be played on Sunday. Plus United up against Lobby Stars, Rivers United up against Doma United, Sporting Lagos, we'll talk about them in a bit, up against Bendel uh, Insurance, Bendel Insurance, all right? So these are the fixtures uh, to look about, to, to look out for, uh, interesting fixtures all around, uh, good spread of a football across uh, the country. Uh, let, me, let me just quickly uh, go to Austin, quickly. Um, I mean, your thoughts on these matches that you have seen, anyone uh, jump at you? Hey, in back three, I see, you know, um, any, all day, every day, back in the day, currently, this is a fixture that football uh, league football followers in Nigeria look up to and aim by with where they are on the league table. I think they are fifth on the log. Remember, uh, as at March day 10, we were still talking about Aimba and how they will crawl back 
you know, to the top and are beginning to find their way. And if you check uh, on that fifth position where everybody is, they are tied on 32 points with Doma, that is third, and Cano Pillars, that is, that is fourth. They are playing in a bar against shooting stars. So you would expect them to do just what they need to do uh, to beat shooting stars. But this is the second standard, stanza. This is very crucial for uh, the league. So clubs will not approach it the way they did uh, in the first stanza. But shooting stars definitely needs to see the need to, to improve their season. There's also a Sporting Lagos and Bendel Insurance. Sporting Lagos have said they will improve from what they did in the first stanza. This is just the baptism of fire for them, newly promoted side. And then they've, they've now seen that <laughs> to chill with the big boys is not easy. And what a time to, you know, actually show that they can stand the heat when they go against a, a decent side in Bendel Insurance. Uh, you, you, you laughed over Aqua United. And, and truly, um, these days, you just wonder what's wrong with the promise keepers. Not a fantastic... In fact, not what to talk about the first times are, and now they go against Rangers, who also sees the need to do so well in the second stanza. I'm trying to look at Rangers on the league table. They are a side that also needs to improve. They are eighth of the log. So with that now on 28 points, and looking at play two United at the sixth with 31 points, Rangers will be targeting the top four. Say. Beat Aqua United, try not to lose your next away game, and then win your next home game. We can start seeing Rangers within the top four regions. So that's a very important, important fixture in the MPFL. There's also Plato United and Lobby Stars. Somebody will say, what's in that fixture? Plato United, the Peace Boys, they are a very, very decent side, particularly when they are playing at home. And against Lobby that has gone away from home this season, uh, picked about two or three away wins, and picked vital draws on the road when they needed to, you know, pick it. I remember when they defeated um, the uh, 3SC, it was a lot of talks right there on social media. I tried to let people understand that she has size. I like the bands that were seen with the league. So we'll play two United and Lobby Stars will definitely get us talking. Play two United, they are fifth on the log. Lobby Stars, they are first on the log with 36 points. It's pretty tight because if Lobby Stars don't win that game and Remo Stars go on to win their game, they will drop. So that makes it a very important fixture. And I want to see if Lobby Stars can keep that away form that it displayed in the first stanza when the second stanza resumes, Yemi. Yeah, and uh, you talk about Sporting Lagos. Um, everybody has said, I mean, quite a number of things about Sports Lagos and how um, they're trying to get used to life uh, on uh, in the top flight. Uh, well, Dr. Agubiade is with us now. He joins us via uh, Zoom. Greetings to you, Dr. Thanks for finding out time, finding yeah. a way to be with us on the show. Hello, hello. Good evening, Yemi. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm used to having you sit down here, but anyway, um, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> you understand. It's all right. It's all right. Um, I mean, you, you heard Austin talk about the fixtures, talk about the matches, uh, and I'm very sure uh, you know the f matches that we played, match day 20. Uh, in a minute or two, uh, talk about some of the fixtures that you think would be interesting to watch out for. Of course, if you ask me over and over, I'm going to tell you that uh, one among the features I've been looking out for in the night. For example, every same time in the Southwest, uh, Southwest Derby, the one between Sunshine Stars of Apure and uh, Quara United. You know, Sunshine Stars, they've not been doing wonderfully well. If you check the stats, their last five games, they've only managed uh, a victory and uh, if you look at uh, Quara United, on the other hand, in their last five games, uh, they only recorded uh, two victories as well. And these two teams, uh, I, I, will, I will not call them an internal rival, but you know, when it comes to football on the southwest side of the Niger, Niger prefer Premier League, you see that these two always come at log ahead. And I'm expecting a firecracker. You remember that the old boy, talking about uh, Kennedy Boboy, just returned to his uh, old team, talking about Sunshine Stars of our prayer, and we're expecting a whole lot. Uh, Godfrey Obabona is back on board. They are <laughs> coming with all of the experiences he gathered in the Europa when he was uh, in the European continent, playing his, uh, prof uh, his professional uh, football. Let's, oh, let's see what happened between, between these two. 
and let's hope for a better football game on the field of play. All right, let's hope for uh, better matches on the field of play. Let me you to also quickly. We're talking about Sporting Lagos. Uh, they vowed to bounce back in the second um, stanza. That you know, looking forward to doing well uh, in the second stanza. We've we've talked so much about how well organized they had the banter and all of the things they bring, the vibe they give the Lagos uh, fans. But I'm very sure we all agree that staying in the top in the top flight is the priority for this season. 15th on the log, 21 points from 19 matches. They definitely don't like it, so they are hoping to improve this second stanza. But you see, this is this is top-flight football, and they're new to it. So I think the, what they need to do, the objective, should be to stay um, in the MPFL because we need them. We like the vibes that they've come into the league with. We need more of Sporting Lagos, more of Remo Stars, just to change the environment and the look and feel of league football in Nigeria. Let's listen to uh, Sporting Lagos. They have vowed uh, to recover and improve in this second stanza. We had a very good opportunity to land in the first round and um, uh, we have also the quality within the squad, within the team, within the backroom staff to be able to turn things around. It was a very good experience in the first round and we're going into the second round with um, better confidence and um, a better experience of the league and um, we want to turn things around and we will do that. We are also trying to improve to make sure that it's not easy to play first half and play second half with the same pace and the same dominance. I mean, you are playing also against a team that prepared against 11 players, so you don't expect that every part of the game you have to dominate. The most important thing that in your best moments, in your attacking moments, in your moments with the ball, you have to be able to make your opponents pay and get the result you want out of it. You know, if you also look at a couple of teams have come up and gone down and come up and stay, so like, take a very good example as Remo. They came up and they didn't stay, they went down. Now they are a strong force. But you can't you can't just cheat the the number of years that they've had the experience in the league. We are going through our own process and um, we want to make sure that it's a different learning curve, it's a different experience from what others have had to make sure that we stay in the league and next year we think about consolidating and become stronger in the next three years, be able to contest for things and that's the normal process. But unfortunately we all want magic in Nigeria and sometimes it doesn't happen. All right, <laughs> head coach of Sport Lagos, Paul Ofo, uh, sharing his thoughts uh, with us. And um, he understands that it's a journey. He understands that it's a journey. He understands that it's a process. It might take a while, uh, but you can't um, subvert that process. You can't circumvent it. You have to go through it. But of course, they will be open. It doesn't take too long. Uh, they want to be uh, like grandmasters who... I mean, everybody has almost forgotten that the, the, the years back they got in because they're, they're now are probably among the big boys on the domestic scene. I mean, also, you listen to uh, the coach, Paul Afford, there uh, speaking uh, about um, expectations for the club and the fact that he understands that this is a journey. Now, he mentioned it clearly that they need to respect the process, you know, but the pressure is from the fans. The fans always want you to win whenever you step out there. Uh, and for a Lagos-based club, Lagos don't have a team until they came. MFM used to be the darling club of Lagos. And then, uh, for some reason, the, the church discontinued the team. And now they've got sports in Lagos. And I hear there's inside Lagos also in the wings. Hopefully, someday they also play top flight football. But sports in Lagos, the good thing is they, they now know that it's not an easy league. So whatever it is, lessons learned from the first round, it will be important in the second round. Coach Paul of said it clearly that they need to do just enough to stay in the league. They also need to understand that it's one step at a time. I think what they first need to do is to create an atmosphere that whenever they are playing in Lagos, the fans come out, support them. And why the fans are doing that, they're playing good football and getting the points. Because I remember there are teams that have come to Lagos so pick points. In this league, when you play at home, you must make sure that you secure those points and go away to also ensure that you don't get beaten. Now with the second stanza and where they are on the table, 15 points, uh, 21 points from about 19 matches, not so good. They are 15th on the log. 
if you don't start getting the points, let's say the first five matches, and you start struggling, then it becomes a problem because once you drop to that relegation battle and you start meeting those traditional teams in the APFL when they need their points, they're definitely going to take it. So it's, it's definitely going to be um, a difficult task for Sporting Lagos. But the mindset that they're having now is important. And for them, they just need to do all they can to stay in the league. Sports tonight on channels television. Let's go on this quick break. Now, when we come back, we still have the team standing in the wings. We'll get his opinion as regards the league. And then we'll talk about the Super Four calls. Are they ready to take on the lionesses of Cameroon? We'll talk about it. Don't go anywhere. Stay. <laughs> Sports tonight on Channels Television. We are previewing March Day 20 of the Nigeria Premier Football League and just gone by Remo Stars Sports in Lagos determination to stay in top flight football. Let's go to Dotun Dotun. Uh, you, 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 I'm sure you know a thing or two about Sports in Lagos. You watch them, you follow them. If you love Lagos, you live in Lagos. Uh, you think they have what it takes to remain in the MPFL? Uh, well, to a large extent, uh, I will say yes to your question, going to the fact that when it comes to football management, you can actually not take it away from them. When it comes to being structured, you can see that the team is well structured. And those are the things that make you play good football on the field of play. When you can actually manage the team properly, you can be rest assured that the, 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 the other things on the field of play can be taken care of. Uh, that is why I'm saying to you now that Sporting Lagos are what it takes to remain in the Nigerian Premier League. But they just need to start picking points, like rightly said the other time, talking about getting the three points now, talking about playing their next five games, if they can amount yep. as possible 15, is really going to actually get them going right. To get to the point on the road in the Nigerian Premier League is not so easy. It's highly, highly competitive. I, I will say that over and over. But what you need to do to, to remain in the league is to make sure that as you're getting the three maximum points at home, when you're on the road, you still need to get the points as well. That is what will keep you in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Uh, for, for, for Sporting Lagos, the management is top-notch. The structure is okay. But on the field of play, they need to translate all of this behind the scene. A performance is to the performance on the field of play. So if they can do that, I think they remain in the Nigerian professional football league. And when it comes to next season, they should be looking out for maybe getting into the continent. Right, I totally believe that. Also, um, yeah, me, I don't know about shooting stars and aim, but does that one excite you? Well, it does. Um, it doesn't matter the form of those two teams involved. I mean, traditional teams in the Nigeria Premier Football League. And, and of course, when teams like that play, I mean, form uh, is thrown off uh, the window. And uh, you just have to just see those matches to see, um, you know, how, how it will go. And the good thing now is, I don't want to call the AFCON a distraction, but it's, it's not there. So you have the chance now to go to any of these venues uh, and, and see. And now, especially now, that the, the spotlight is beginning to um, rest on players on the domestic scene. And, I mean, they had a good representative, um, Stanley Wabali, even though, even though he currently pl plies his trade in South Africa, but a lot of people could point to um, when he was here, it was easily recognizable and, you know, visible when he was here. And that, and that tells the story of the average uh, football uh, player on the domestic scene, if given a chance. And I'm very sure this right. opportunity, most of them uh, would use it uh, wisely uh, because you don't know who's watching. All right, let's move on on the show. Austin talked about it earlier. It's time to talk about the ladies now, uh, and they're preparing to face uh, their fiercest rival, the WWE analysis of Cameroon in an Olympic qualifier. And of course, uh, uh, the list is out, so let's just go across to uh, talk about the players. I I'm going to reel, reel out the names quickly as I can so that we can talk about it and uh, also move on. Uh, Chama Kandadozie uh, leads the list for the goalkeepers. She plays in Paris. Uh, Tochuko Luehi, uh, Linda Jewaku, uh, from my also quiz, uh, the three goalkeepers called up uh, into the squad. For 
the defenders will snatch you or Hale, Ashley Plumter, Oluwa Tosi, Debei, Akudo, Ogbola. You have uh, Michelle Alozie. She plays in Houston Dutch. Rafia Timuro uh, also in the mix, the defenders. Let's uh, flip. I talk about the midfielders. Deborah Abiodo is in there. Alibato Aide, she's in there. Uh, Jennifer Echegini, she's in there. Tony Page, she plays in Sevilla uh, of Spain. She's in there as well. All right. Uh, Christy Uchebe as well. Uh, Rashida Ajib. I mean, how could I have missed that? Uh, Rashida Ajib uh, in that squad as well. Uh, let's look at the forwards. Omar is all about G Day. Uh, she plays it. Rife is Spain. Esther Koroko is there. Ifioma Onubolu is there as well. Let's see Oshola. She's in the list. Uh, Uchena Kalu. She's sitting there. She plays on Raising Louisville in the United States. Gift Monday. Uh, we did much talked about Gift Monday. She also plays in Spain. These are the forwards uh, in the squad. I mean, enough uh, to, I mean, get the job uh, done, you, you, you would say. Uh, let me go to Dotu quickly uh, as I go to take my seat. Uh, I mean, Dotu, you would expect that these ladies would be able to get the job done against their fierce rivals. The job done. It is expected to get the job done if you look at times, you definitely say kudos to them. Remember last tournament, uh, the, the kind of performance they actually put up, uh, and everybody uh, across the world really actually shower accolades on them. And coming up against a team that have actually been a problem to them in the past years, they all they know what is at stake. They all but they also want to be part of the Olympic tournament. So I believe that the manager himself knows what is at stake. The players, they know what is at stake. So what they need to do is to actually put everything together and make sure they get the three maximum points on the road and as well come back home and actually get the job done and skill through uh, to the tournament proper. All right. Uh, through no fault of their own, they've missed out in previous editions. Um, Austin, do you think it's going to be different this time out? I believe it will be. The vibe is different. Um, the team is getting better. Uh, the, the experience from the World Cup is valuable. And we've got the old guns, you know. It's the same old uh, set of players, and they know themselves so well. They've built some level of camaraderie amongst themselves. So I think they can get the job done. But I'm worried because Cameroon, indomitable lionesses, they've been on fire all through the qualifiers. The Super Falcons have missed out of the last two editions of the Olympics. Uh, and now that might put a bit of pressure on them. But the good thing is they're going away first. I think it's next week, Friday, the 23rd. They go, they play. Um, I don't see, it's, I struggle to see any team in, in Africa scoring the Super Falcons more than two. I struggle. No matter how it goes, it may be a 2 1 result. Or it's ends two two, or the Super Falcons will beat you, or it will play a one one or a, a scoreless draw, you know. But against Cameroon, we know that there's some annoying rivalry. I think Cameroon just just know that for them to be respected in women's football in Africa, they they need to be two teams, and for them, it's either they beat the Bayana Bayana of South Africa or Nigeria Super Falcons, you know. So that objective for them is what they are using to be respected. But look, versatile defender Ashley Plumter is back on the team after the World Cup and a, and a beautiful performance. Uh, Tony Payne is in there. Um, goalkeeper Chiamaka Nadozie is there. Osina Chio Ali. The entire, the, the entire bunch, they, they, they understand that this is the Olympics. Some of them will be thinking of you know, their careers in the next five years. Or oh, if we don't get make this one now, there's a likelihood we might retire without getting to play in the Olympics. And there's this pride among sportsmen and women that I've met all over the world. The ones that are Olympians, you hear me? They sing it into your ears. So it's it's something of prestige. And I'm sure some of the players in this mix, they would want to, you know, have that experience. So with that motivation, with that objective, I'm thinking the Super Falcons will do just enough to beat Cameroon and be in prime position to qualify for the Paris Olympics.
All right, that's it. All right, let's move on uh, to our last point of call on the show tonight, the English Premier League. A lot of ground to cover for us on the show tonight. But first, let's reel out the fixtures. I'll go across, I'll go across now to uh, just quickly reel it out. On Saturday, that's tomorrow, Brentford will take on Liverpool. Uh, we hear goalkeeper Allison may not be involved. Burnley will take on Arsenal or Tough Moore. Uh, Fulham will take on Aston Villa. Newcastle United will be up against Bournemouth. Nottingham Forest will be up against West Ham. All of these matches will be played uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's flip quickly and talk about uh, the other matches. Uh, Tottenham uh, will take on Wolverhampton Wanderers. And of course, this one is the biggest one for the weekend. Manchester City will take on Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea. And of course... Uh, Talking about uh, the other matches on Sunday, Sheffield United will take on Brighton, Luton Town will take on Manchester United, Everton will take on Crystal Palace. All right, uh, Dotto, uh, let me quickly come to you. We might not get many opportunities uh, to talk uh, you know, about all of these matches. And obviously, I know you want to talk about uh, City and Chelsea, then maybe one other fixture, uh, depending on how much time we have left. But let me just go quickly to you. Uh, Manchester City and Chelsea. Where do you think the pendulum will swing? Well, well, well. well. Uh, evil, uh, the, the kind of results we saw. Uh, we were expecting that it's going to be a traction for Chelsea, but they had the current form of uh, Manchester City after the return of. of uh, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, uh, it, has, it has been wonderful. They, they've been firing from all cylinders. They've been taking all commands to the cleaners. And if you look at the form of Chelsea, it has been neither here nor there. They've actually been struggling even against uh, smaller opposition where you expected that they are going to actually come with their A game. But it has not been like that for Chelsea this season. If you look at their last game, their last home game, they lost by two goals to four. We expected that Wolverhampton we, Wanderers would travel to Stafford Bridge and take Chelsea to the cleaners. It was not expected, but that was what we saw happen during the uh, last match. They fixed up. But for Chelsea, it, it, it has not been good for them this season. But for Man City, if you look at what they've been able to do so far, though they are not at the top of the league, but you see they are actually almost at the top of the league, going through the fact that they have a game at hand. And uh, if they can actually win that particular game, they go uh, to the Zenit of the league. But for Chelsea, it is not so good for them. Though they have, we have a whole lot of players actually come back from injury for Chelsea. And yeah, we should expect, because they know how to play big games, but well, maybe we should be expecting a, big, a better performance from Chelsea uh, on Saturday. All right. Uh, let me go to Austin. He probably has the scoop. Well, I mean, on current form, you could say Chelsea may be in for... A beating, but you never can you never can say this season, especially against the big teams, they've not fared badly, especially on occasions when you expect that they were going to get hammered. Uh, maybe that might be the case. And we also hear two injuries for City to worry about: Bernardo Silva, Jack Grealish. Maybe those two could could be a problem. No, Pep has come out to say no problem. You know that he has built this team around team football and you know when one is not available the team understands that everybody needs to get their job done so Jack Grealish uh, and, and Bernardo Silva's injury will not do anything you know when they were not when they were playing without Haaland and um, Kevin De Bruyne they didn't drop off the top four yes they struggled to get results here and there suffered one or two losses but now De Bruyne is back Haaland is back and this is a big game but I, I totally agree with you. The, the, the thing about Super Saturday or Super Sunday is anything can happen. Uh, for Poch, he has told Chelsea, right after that loss to Wolves, that 4-2 loss, they've gone on to win two games. I think one at home, the other one away. Particularly that win in the cup encounter with Aston Villa. They were fantastic. The players showed up, did the job, and then they went away. In fact, two away wins. And then they went to Sellers Park to beat a struggling Crystal Palace that is in dire need of points. So Poch is saying to them, with the last two results, show that you can actually go away from home. This set the record straight at the start. I thought I, I, I mentioned that it's Chelsea hosting Manchester City. You know, this is going to be at the Etihad. So Poch has said, go to the Etihad and see how we can make it three away wins 
out of three away matches. So let's listen to uh, Godiola. I talk about this one. He's saying that they need to maintain focus. It's five games and five wins for Pep's team. He's playing really good. The last games has playing really, really good. Uh, they have everything. It's intense and uh, quality and most of the team define if they are able to don't lose the balls and it's difficult to find a player that can lose the balls and a really good team, tough one tomorrow. Didn't have any doubts about his quality. Uh, a part of the stats, the way he's playing is a, a star player, so he's already a, an exceptional, an exceptional player. So he traveled or he moved on to get the minutes, the minutes that he has, and it just was a question of time, and he showed his immense quality. Uh, Jack, I think he will not be ready, and Bernardo will assess now in the training session about his knock. And uh, Koba, I think, is back, or training at least, and Sergio as well, so and the rest we'll see. When we arrive the last eight, ten games, after we'll see how many players are in, teams are involved. So I think these three will be there, but can add someone, so the distance between the four or the fifth is, is so minor. So... Uh, we'll see at the end, but this question, it doesn't matter if it's two, three, or four. If you, we are there, it's just to win our games. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, as I said earlier, no problem with the injury struggles in Manchester City. Five wins in their last, last five matches. They, are, they look intimidating, uh, Dortmund, but as I said, this is football. Chelsea, on the other hand, they've travelled uh, on the road and they've recorded two wins, two vital wins. One against Aston Villa and the second one against Crystal Palace. Can they make, can they make it three out of three when they visit the Etihad Stadium? Uh, well, like I said the other time, that uh, against big opposition this season, Chelsea have been doing well. Remember against Aston, they played out two all draw against Manchester City. They played a four all draw and. Uh, Again, against another, uh, against Man City again at Etihad Stadium. But, you know, I often say something jokingly that for you to go to Etihad to get a point, you're actually going to go through the high of the needle. And if you look at the current form of Chelsea going down to Etihad to get a victory, but coming from the guy in charge of the team, the president of Moya Pochettino, saying that, he has vowed that they will go down to Etihad and they will attack uh, Manchester City. Let's let's put their hands. <laughs> okay, I, I think I get what Dotu is saying. We'll see. Uh, Mauricio Pochettino saying they will go to uh, the Etihad and attack. Well. Some will say that's a recipe for disaster, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Interesting game to look forward to. All right, let's list, also quickly listen to, uh, we, you know, we told you Burnley will take on Arsenal. Burnley manager, visa company, but a disciple of Pep Guardiola, uh, he's been speaking and he says, look, this is not the time to feel sorry uh, for ourselves. It's the time to fight and, and see. Um, visa company has been very stubborn, has refused to change its attacking philosophy. It's been, the team has been losing games, but he wants to play the way he wants to play. He's saying, look, you're playing against Arsenal. It's not the time to feel sorry. Go out there and fight. Let's listen to the bowling manager. We'll come back to wrap things up on the show. Obviously, we get to a point, a stage of the season where Arsenal was probably one of those turnaround performances away at the Emirates. And since that game, I don't think we've sat here discussing performances too much. Yes, we can speak about the first half performance against Fulham, but then the second half performance against Fulham was really good. So um, we've been in every game since that game. So it's about results now. And... Um, and about get, getting it over the line and keeping it, keeping it, keeping it out of the net. It's, there's not much more to it than that at the moment for us, because the games have the games have been good, but it's not enough. It, it doesn't change from when we play Spurs, when we play Liverpool, when we played City not long ago. You need a few things to go your way. You need exceptional performances, and then at the end, um, you know, these teams have always got tools to hurt you, but you need to to make the most of your moments and. Um, Certainly had enough enough moments across all of those games, 
<clears throat> but we didn't make the most of it. Um, but in general, you know, we, we, we shared memories and experiences together, playing against each other, but also working together. And um, so we have, a, we have a common history and that, that's, that's always something that, that remains. Yep. It doesn't matter home or away, it's the result side of things. And plenty of good games to look back on this season, plenty of good performances. But, but, but in the end, we, um, we, you know, we, we can't feel sorry for ourselves. It's just been a reality for us. And that's why every single day we're looking to, to, to improve. And um, you know, every game is a new beginning. Uh, Vincent Company, uh, do his best to be optimistic. That's the only choice uh, that he has. All right, uh, we've come to, uh, at that point, we have a few minutes to wrap up the show, but let me do this quickly. Um, uh, Dr. Agumbi, I want to thank you for your time on the show. I really wish, uh, I really wish we could take you uh, on a whole lot of other th issues, but I guess uh, this is where the cookie crumbles. Thank you for your time on the show today. We'll do this again some other time. All right, so that's um, door two. Uh, Austin, this is going to be our last one of call. If something doesn't change, it appears like Burnley will go down. Definitely. I mean, um, they, they've really struggled. I think about uh, just 13 points from 24 matches, and they've recorded 17 losses, 17 losses out of 24 games. So uh, it's going to be pretty tough, but... Uh, they're holding on to Vincent Company, and he's saying that every game is like a new one. Uh, the Gunners now, if they're not giving you five, they will give you six. I hope they won't give Burnley seven tomorrow. So let's see what they can do at Tough Mall. But for Super Saturday, Chelsea taking on Manchester City. I've listed Conor Gallagher, Aicedo, Enzo Fernandez, and Cole Palmer to step up their game. If they do step up their game, you hear me, then it's going to be a very tough encounter for Manchester City. That's for sure. In London, I'm Austin O'Connor. And in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, that's the show today. We thank you for everything uh, that we've been able to uh, bring to you. Thank you for allowing us into your homes without knocking on the door. We really appreciate it. Uh, we urge you to enjoy your weekend. you see us again next week. I'm Amy Adebayo. Bye-bye.